Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. This series is for new container gardeners. I'm going to go over all the basic supplies and some general keys that you have to follow to have a successful container garden. Now I have a lot of videos on planting. You can look at my channel and find those. I did all the warm weather crops back there in those containers and I'll be doing uh, container planting videos all the way through the fall. But I thought it was really important to understand what you need. So let's start with the basic fertilizers that you're going to need to take care of your plants. You're going to need an organic granular type fertilizer. This is slow release. It will feed your plant over weeks and months. This is just plant tone. Um, you want the numbers of nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, you'll see it on the bag, to be around a 555. Five, five. A couple numbers up or down is perfectly fine. We use this to set up the containers. And just real quick, what I would do, that's about a 10 gallon container. I fill it halfway full of the uh, container mix or potting mix. We'll talk about that in a second. Throw in a handful or two, halfway in, mix it through, fill it back up, another handful or two, mix it through. That's how I set up my containers. If the container is a little bit smaller, maybe just one or two handfuls in that. You're also going to need a water soluble fertilizer. This is a fast release and this is what we're going to feed our plants every 17 to 21 days with based on the size of the plant. And for instance, most water solubles obviously mix with water. Just follow the instructions. This is fish emulsion. I like using that. You can use any one that you find. And you would just mix that in water, follow the instructions, and then you water your plant leaves and the soil every seven days to 21 days. Your container plants are going to suck the life and water out of your container mixes, out of your potting mixes. And again, we'll talk about potting mix in a second. So you really have to keep them fed. So this is two things you're going to need. Organic granular slow release, water soluble quick release fertilizer. And you're going to need an insect dust. This is uh, Spinosad, Captain Jack's dead bug. It is organic. You're going to get pests. This is great for controlling pests that may land on your plants. All right, so let's talk about the potting mix and container mix because we've got fertilizer down, insect dust down. Now we want to have the right container mix or potting mix in our containers. So the next thing that's really important is what do you fill your containers with? And you want to use a container mix or a potting mix if you're buying the bag products. I have a lot of videos on that. You can look up um, bag soil mix or you can look at even uh, making your own container mix on my channel and you'll see um, videos on those two subjects. The whole key is to make sure your container mix holds moisture. And that means it's going to have at least 50% peat moss, shredded hardwood, cocoa core, certain materials that are just going to really retain water. If your container mix dries out just one time, it will damage the root system of your plants and your plants will suffer. So it's really important you start with the right soil for your containers. Now, again, if you go to the big box stores, you're going to see all kinds of bagged products and you're looking for the product that's called container mix or um, potting mix. Sorry, lost my thought for a second. Those are going to be the ones that have what you want to retain moisture. Now they're a little bit of expensive. Actually, that's the most expensive way to do it, but you can make your own. That's what I do. I use shredded hardwood, cocoa core, peat moss, and again, check out the video. But you want to make sure you start with the right soil for your containers. You must have water retention in it, and that's going to be mostly peat moss, and then people sometimes add in, or companies will add in shredded hardwood and cocoa core. Don't skimp on the soil for your containers. You'll be greatly disappointed. So one of the hardest questions to answer is what size container do I need? And the answer really lies with the size of the plant. That's a squash to the right, a determinant tomato to the left. That's a 20 to 30 gallon pot. When those plants are small, you might think they could fit into that 17 to 20 gallon pot. Or when they're small, you might think you could just put, you know, the plants into these uh, 8 to 10 gallon pots. You have to imagine the full size of the plant and match it to the container. That's rule number one. Rule number two, when are you growing them? If you're growing in the spring from the cool weather into the warm weather, sometimes you can use smaller containers. If you're growing plants in the full summer when it's really hot, you're going to need larger containers because those plants usually get bigger and because of the sun and the 90 degree temperatures, you're going to have to water a lot more. The whole key to selecting the container is to make sure it can manage the size of the plant and the root system of the plant and it's not going to run out of water. 
Now, it's the fall. I'm growing from summer heat into the fall, so I can actually use containers that are a little bit uh, that are smaller, typically growing, because uh, that I typically grow them in, because I'm going into the cooler temperatures and watering is going to be less of a demand. So what do I mean by that? This is kale right over here. These are about three gallon containers. Typically I would grow them in a five or seven gallon container something that size right there, just one plant, because they're going to demand more in the summer heat. These are cool weather crops that also kind of do well in the summer, so it could be a little confusing. But because I'm going into uh, October, November here where it's cool, I'm going to grow a kale plant in this smaller container and it'll be okay. Make sure, just a side note, all your containers have to have drainage. If they hold water in there and they don't drain, it's going to rot the root systems out. I'm also not growing this kale plant to full size. Some kale plants get like really tall. I'm going to be taking these leaves regularly for salad so I can get away with a smaller container because I'm not letting, letting it get to full size. And I'm going to be taking, um, well, I'm going to be taking the leaves, not letting it get to full size. And I'm growing into the cool weather. If we were going from spring into summer, I would stick one plant right into that container because that kale plant's going to demand a lot more in the summer. Now this is a fall planting so I have two kale plants, some beets and lettuce in there. That's enough container again because I'm growing into the cool season. Watering isn't going to be a great demand. Now, I know that it's confusing. So what would I recommend? These are root pouches. I'm affiliated with them. An 8 to 10 gallon pouch is perfect. You can put a lot into there. You can grow two pepper plants in this. You can grow a determinant uh, tomato in there. You could grow a bush cucumber, bush squash. It's very versatile. You can put in peas, lettuces, um, beans. Eight to ten gallons is a good base. Now, if you're going to not be able to water regularly, this also depends on each gardener, for whatever reason, like we work, um, or you just can't manage it, you know, 24-7. Maybe go from an 8 to 10 gallon container to something that's around a 15 gallon container. And that metal one's about 17-ish. That works too. So you're really thinking about the size of the plant, your ability to manage the watering, and the temperatures that you're going to be growing into. Other plants do well in flower boxes. Lettuces have more shallow roots, so you can use a flower box. Um, I've got some beets that I'm growing in there for beet greens in that flower box. I also grow radishes in there. So there's different strategies too based on the plant. So a lot of your leafy greens will do well in a container like that. Again, like I said, radishes, uh, short carrots will all grow in there. So that's just kind of the preface for purchasing the container. Root pouches are nice. They stay cooler. They also do something that's called air pruning where the root systems will grow through the fabric and then when they hit the air, the air dries them and they get pruned off. They develop a better root system than being in a plastic container where if this was a plastic container, when it hits the, the root hits the plastic container, it just grows around and gets into a nice tight coil. You don't necessarily want that. But, you know, if you have a choice, I would go with something like these root pouches or fabric pots. They're a lot less expensive and I think they treat the root system of the plants better. So that's the quick overview of containers. If in doubt, get a bigger container than you think and make sure you're thinking about the size of the plant when it's mature when you're picking the container. So let's talk a little bit about the different kinds of plants or vegetables that you can grow in your garden. You have cool season crops. Cool season crops in general, like cool days, really not past 70 degrees, they like cool nights, 50 degree nights, and a lot of them can take a frost. For instance, this lettuce can frost. The leaf can freeze and then when it warms, the leaf is perfectly fine. If a cucumber plant, which is a warm season crop, if that was hit by frost, the leaves would all die off. Same thing with tomatoes and squash. So when you're in your spring and you're moving towards the summer, freezing temperatures to warm temperatures, you, you want to grow your cool weather crops. And if you check out my blog, The Rusted Garden Journal, I have a list of 24 different um, plants that are cool weather crops. I'll put a link in the video description. That will give you some sense of what you can grow right now because it's the fall. 
we're move well almost the fall we're moving from summer to fall so we're going to put in another wave of those cool weather crops and I have some transplants there a lot of different lettuces kale kohlrabi different plants like that so your warm season crops just real quick and you can do a quick search on the internet are cucumbers beans squash zucchini um, tomatoes peppers eggplant okra they just can't take a frost and they really prefer 60 70 degree nights 80 degree days a lot of plants don't like really getting into the upper 90s they sort of shut down so you have to know what you're growing you have your cool weather crops you have your warm weather crops and you can just do a quick look on the internet to know what you can plant so as we're in the fall here in Maryland zone 7 where I'm at I don't really get hard frost till maybe October and November nowadays with this crazy temperatures that we've been having over the last years so I have a good 60 days 70 days before the frost comes so I can grow a lot of different plants and if you want to subscribe and follow my channel I've already done videos on all the larger plants how to plant those and get them going just did a video on the cool season crops but I'm also going to go into seed starting for the fall and these are principles you can also use in the spring but they vary when you're growing in the fall you have to pay greater attention to how hot the Sun is so let me talk about that so typically in the spring, I'm starting my cool season crops in these smaller basic cells indoors because it's too cold outside. And it's perfectly fine because you're indoors to use these little cells. The temperature's regulated about 70 degrees. You're using grow lights, no issue. When you start your fall crops, your seed's starting outdoors. And because right today it's 85, some days are 90, and I'm waiting you know, for the temperatures to start dropping, but you want to get your seeds started before those ideal temperatures come so that you have nice transplants just like that ready to go into the ground or into your containers. So if I filled this with this basic starting mix like I did here and this sat in the sun for a day at 85, 90, 95 degrees, everything in here would bake, the soil would dry out and the plants would die off. So you don't really want to use these smaller cells. You want to save old containers um, you can ask friends that have gardens ask them just to give you their their seed um, containers I sell these at my seed shop if you want to use a bigger container like these and the reason you want to do something like this is because it's good to hold moisture again moisture is the key and the plants can stay in here longer when the root systems start developing in here you really got to get them out into the ground. When you start in something like this, you've got more time before you have to get them into the containers. Now, when you're starting outdoors, there's a benefit. When you start your plants indoors under grow lights, they're not used to the weather, they're not used to the UV rays of the sun. If I took these out from inside and put them outside for a day, the sun would burn them off. By starting outdoors from summer into fall, they're going to be hit with the UV light. They're going to be perfectly fine. They're going to be ready to go into your containers. But these cannot sit in the sun. So my main tip is to put these on the north side of your house where they just get morning sun and then the hot afternoon sun goes away and you end up with shade. And I'm going to keep mine right in this space here because I have the morning sun coming in this way and then the summer or the afternoon sun is all back there they'll have shade. You want to protect your seed starts from being pounded by sun. So you can give them morning sun, you can give them later afternoon sun. If you're home and you're not working, then you can kind of move them in and out. That's another tip is that you could, you know, bring these inside in the afternoon when it's cooler because they're cool weather crops. You get to appreciate that cooler temperature in the root system. And then you put them out in the morning or the later afternoon, let them stay out overnight and toughen up. But just make sure you don't leave your seed starts from summer to fall for your cool weather crops in the full sun or they're going to be damaged. So let's talk about watering. I get asked this question all the time. How often do I have to water my container plants? And you cannot answer that question except for when your plants need it. And I'm not trying to be sarcastic. It's the truth. It varies so much depending on what plant you're growing, how big the plant is, the size of your container, if you're in the fall, the spring, or the summer. A plant like that, in full summer, even in that 20, 30 gallon container, may have to be watered once or twice a day. In the spring, 
all those plants in a larger container there may just have to be watered once or twice a week. In the spring, a plant in a smaller container might have to be watered three times a week. So I think you get my point. It's really based on container size, plant size, number of plants in there, your temperatures, and what's the general rule of thumb. The general rule of thumb is when in doubt, water your plant. As long as your containers have holes in them, it's really hard to overwater most of your plants. Now, you can go and, you know, check the top inch or two of the soil. Your soil typically dries from the top down. If the top two inches is dry, then water your plant in. But I kind of just tend to a schedule, you know, two or three times a week in the spring, every other day in the beginning of the summer, every day in the high heat of the summer when the plants are larger. Now, I know container gardening can be a little bit confusing, so I do have a new book coming out. It's called The Modern Homestead Garden, Growing Self-Sufficiency in Any Size Backyard. It's coming out in February. But it will cover cool weather crops, warm weather crops. It'll talk about matching the right size container to your plants. And it really goes all the, over all the principles you need to have a successful vegetable garden. It teaches principles. So you can just kind of follow along and use it to meet your own needs um, in your garden, because every garden varies a little bit. Watering is essential because if the root system of your plants dry out just one time, it damages the whole plant. For instance, if a tomato plant root system dries out, the container mix dries out, they're going to have a hard time pulling in nutrients. The tomatoes are probably going to get blossom end rot. Do not let your soil dry out in your containers. Water more often if you need to. Um, you may damage a few plants that way but you're going to save your whole container garden by watering more often than you might think. So I guess we'll just recap by just taking a look at the size of the containers. There's about four gallon containers. That's a five to seven gallon container with the black pearl in there. 20 to 30 gallon container in a whiskey barrel. Squash, determinate tomato. 17-ish gallon container right there. Bunch of different lettuces, some perennial herbs cucumber plants and you can see this plants getting beat up even in a container like that even though it's being watered regularly um, and there's actually three cucumber plants in there that is a determined tomato a zucchini plant a single zucchini plant look how big that is and that's in a half whiskey barrel these are the 8 to 10 gallon root pouches a good basic container for sort of all purpose for spring summer and fall and then because I'm growing into the fall right now, I'm using smaller containers for the crops right here and packing them in more. So again, I encourage you to look up warm weather crops, cool weather crops, and just get a sense of, of what they are. And again, you can go to my blog, which I'll link in the description to figure that out. I'll be doing a whole series on container gardening going through the fall. We're going to be planting these up with peas in a little bit with my transplants. and I'm going to be doing seed starting if you want to subscribe. Hope this gives you some idea of how to prepare for a container garden. And I hope that you use it to have a, su a successful container garden. It's never a good feeling to get everything growing. You have a container that's too small and the plants just don't thrive. You know, you, you want to make sure your plants grow well for you and produce. That being said, I'll leave you with this piece of advice. If in doubt, get larger containers, plant less, and you'll be happier for it. Thanks so much for watching, and please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com.